This video lecture is going to teach you two things. First, you're going to learn how to edit a test or a quiz that you've already made. And second, we're going to do a brief overview of all of the questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by talking about how to edit an exam that you've already created. You can edit both the test options and the questions. To do this, you're going to navigate to the exams folder where you've put it. I'm going to put mine, or I have put mine in exam two. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to find the exam I want to edit. When I mouse over the name of the exam, the little drop down arrow will appear, and I'm going to click on that. These two places are where you're going to find the options to edit the test and edit the test options. If you edit the test, this first one, it's going to allow you to change the test questions, to change the point values. If you choose the second one, it will allow you to edit all of those options, your student accommodations, things like that. For our purposes today, we want to specifically go in to edit the test so we can take a close look at the different types of test questions. Let's go ahead and click on that now. Now you see the test canvas again. Our list of all of the different types of questions is over in the Create Question drop-down menu. We see the first one, Calculated Formula. Clicking on that will take us to a math-specific question. It will give you a formula editor down at the bottom. It will give you the title and the question text up at the top. And it gives you some very specific options. If this is something you need, um, you can give a plus minus answer range. I'm going to cancel out of this and we're going to go to the next one. A calculated numeric is a similar type of question except you don't have the formula editor down at the bottom. You have the test, you have the answer, you have the answer range, and now you have feedback for correct or incorrect responses. This one additionally gives you categories and keywords just like we saw in the last video. The third question type you'll get is an either or question, and it has a lot of different options for this. You have the title, the text, like normal, the answer orientation, which if you watched the last video you saw on our true false, and the answer choices are different. You have yes, no, agree, disagree, right, wrong, and interesting enough, you also have a true false option. So there's more than one way in Blackboard to create a true false question. The third type of question we have is the essay question. We're getting into some different options with this type of question. You have the text, you have an answer. This is going to be something that you can actually show to students. And um, so if you want them to have an example to work off of, you can put this up. I usually leave this blank because I don't want to give an example of a correct response, but if you have a um, format or something like that that you want them to use, you can put it into this box and then it will appear for them. Now we're getting into rubrics. Later on in this unit, we're actually going to talk specifically about rubrics, so I just want to show you that this is here and you will learn how to use them in the future. The next question that we're going to go to is a file response. This one allows your students to upload a file. So if they have a paper that you want them to attach or you want them to type in Microsoft Word or um, add an artifact or a sketch or a drawing, this is what you're going to do. And when the student sees this, it, there will be a place for them to upload something. The next type of question that we want to talk about is a fill in multiple blanks. This one has a really interesting and unique format. For each of the words that you want to pull out, you need to assign square brackets with a unique variable inside. For example, if I want students to be able to recite the Gettysburg Address by filling in blank words, I am going to take out a few of these words, create brackets with variables in them. So I just do two of these as an example and I am going to hit next. Now I need to say seven, oops, seven, and liberty. 
and this gives me the answer. You can decide if you want them to be case sensitive or not, or whether or not it's an exact match, a pattern match, or contains the word, and you can decide how many of answers they have for this. So for the variable x, I am going to assign 7, the variable c, I'm going to assign liberty, I'm going to hit next, and now I get the options for feedback and tags and notes. After that, we see fill in the blank. This is a single one, a little bit more self-explanatory. Just write the question, leave out the word that you don't want them to answer, and then you choose again whether you want an exact match, a pattern match, or if it contains something, and case sensitive. The next question that you have is a hotspot. What this actually is, is a question where you can click on an image to select the correct answer. We're going to go through this one and take a look at it as well because it's kind of tricky to set up. For example, if I want them to look at a map of Michigan and select uh, the county that Detroit is in, I'm going to find a map of Michigan. I'm going to write the question. Then I'm going to take a look and find the image that I want and I'm going to hit next. Now I have um, a copyright free map that I found on the internet and I'm going to click and drag the answer to the question. So we all know that Detroit is here in Wayne County. You can sort of see the box that I'm clicking and dragging. It's not very clear on this picture. So if they click anywhere in Wayne County they're getting it correct. And I'm going to hit submit for this one. Now when you go and you look at this question, you'll see that here's the image, there is the correct answer right there. The students will see the map, but they won't see the box outlining where the correct answer is. The next question that we're going to talk about is the jumbled sentence. And this time we've taken the last two words, created equal, off the end. It uses a similar variable to the multiple fill-in-the-blank type question. So in this case, I have two missing words. I'm going to use x and c and period to stand in for the two words I want them to have. I can choose to allow partial credit and then down here I add a minimum of four words. So I'm going to scramble it up. Happy, created, sad, equal. And those four words are going to make up the drop down menu. I'm going to hit next and you'll see an example of this. Please finish the sentence and now they have to choose the words from the drop down menu. It has our usual feedback and categories options and if I hit submit the question shows up down here just like that. The next one is a matching question type. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You ask the question, you decide whether or not they can get partial credit or negative scores for incorrect answers, decide how you want it numbered, and then you write pairs of questions. You can decide if you want random or manual order. It'll give you an example, and we have our normal options. After that, we have multiple answer, which is a good alternative to the multiple choice. You can choose more than one answer. And then you decide how many answers you want, five or four. You choose which ones are correct by clicking the box right here. And if you feel like there are too many boxes, you can hit the remove button right there. And you have one less answer. The next one is classic multiple choice. If your test is entirely multiple choice, it's probably best for you to use the automatic formatting that you submit to us and just write it. Um, but if you just have one or two in, you can create it here too. This one's same as they usually are with the question text and then all of the different options including show answers in random order and then the radial button shows which one is correct. Next we have opinion scale or a Likert scale. Add your question text, choose the options, decide if you want 
partial credit, and then decide how many answers you want. Strongly agree, agree, neither agree, disagree, etc. This is an interesting one to use when you're creating a survey in Blackboard. You can also ask your students to put things in order. So if we, for example, use our Gettysburg address question, we can add our question to the box, decide if there's answer numbering, allow partial credit if we want, and then decide what the answer should be. Hitting next is going to show us an example and we get our feedback options as well. Our third to last one is a quiz bowl, which is kind of like a Jeopardy question. You write your question here, you allow partial credit based on the question, and then you add the interrogatives for your students to use that need to be included in the question. You type in an answer phrase or several answer phrases that give correct answers. Next, we have the classic short answer where you give the question text, and then you can add an example similar to an essay question, attach a rubric, and finally, we have the true-false, which we saw before. So now you have seen all of the questions. When you are finished editing or adding questions, all you need to do is click out of here, and your test will be updated.